So again, my, my audio okay? You guys can hear me online there? We can hear you, Professor. All right, great, thanks. All right, um, let me share my screen. Remember to do it this time before we start. Okay, um, so. Uh, so uh, my agenda today, um, besides, you know, if there's questions from people and stuff, um, I thought I'd, I'd talk a little bit about problem set three. There was um, um, uh, the very last part of problem set three, uh, uh, nobody completely got that 100%. So I thought I'd go over that uh, just real quickly. And then we'll, then we'll get looking at, at the uh, program assignment. So, um, so yeah, I'm mostly just going to talk about the third part, unless somebody wants to ask something about the first question. But I, I was going to talk about the second part of the problem set mostly, I think. I think everybody had the first one, if I remember right. And every, pretty much everybody had the, oh, I wanted to get the example solution. Um, pretty much everybody had the first two parts, at least, on the, the problem set as well, I think. Uh, all right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, everybody's fine kind of figuring out how to show the uh, available resources matched with the information give, given here um, and calculating the need matrix. So um, one thing I'll quickly emphasize for uh, the third part. So to show a state is safe, you do have to show a complete sequence. So I had at least two or three people Basically, in this problem, initially, uh, so given the available of six, three, five, four, um, so you know the, the general um, resource allocation allocation denial or banker's algorithm is find uh, a candidate process whose needs can be met from what's currently available, and then kind of just let you know. So the simulation of the idea is okay. What would happen if I just gave it all the resources it needs? In theory, it should be able to complete its work, and then any other resources it has allocated, it can return back. Um, and then, so the state is safe if all the processes, if we if we allow them to do that, can actually complete their work. Right? Um, the state is not safe if if we can't find such a sequence. So, so really, for the banker's algorithm, you have to show a complete sequence of all the processes being candidates and running and returning their resources back. Um, and so all of them have to be run. So initially given 6354, uh, these are our needs. So you have to find, so uh, process zero is not a candidate because it needs seven, there's only six of, of resource A. So, uh, so the only candidates are process one. So all these have to be less than or equal 6354 when you compare these. So process one, process two uh, is not a candidate because it needs four B, there's only three. Um, but process three and process four are also candidates. So one, three, and four are the only candidates that are initially, only processes that are initially candidates here, like I showed here. Uh, and most, I think everybody got that first part, but then after you run process one, if you, you, uh, you could have selected any of these for our program assignments that I'll talk about here, um, you're supposed to implement the, the, um, uh, find candidate process to always return the process with the lowest process identifier that, that's currently a candidate. So, you know, if, if you do it the way that our program assignment three is going to work, process one should be the one that runs here. But uh, in terms of the banker's algorithm, you know, any you could run, you could select any of these processes that are candidates to run here. But yeah, I, I showed in this example solution having process one run. So when process one runs, um, um, you would return back its allocated resources. Uh, this is a common mistake, although I don't think anybody made this mistake here. So, so yeah, you don't return back its needs or its claims. It's what resources it has allocated go back. So you, you have to add zero, the, the vector 0, 1, 1, 1 into the current available 6354, giving what, 6465, right? So when I ask these questions again, um, you know, on our test at the end of this week, 
you know, you should have a format, something like this. Most people had a format that was fine, right? So, so show the candidates currently given the available, show which one you select to run, keep track of maybe which ones have run, which ones haven't. So that's what I was trying to show here. So, so after this, we've completed process one um, and our available has increased to this. And then most people at, at that point, actually, um, yeah, almost everything except process zero is a candidate. So two, three, four, five, if I did this right here, are all candidates. Um, so most everybody, or well, a lot of people then showed process two running, process three running, process four running, process five running. Uh, but then my kind of objection, though, was you didn't really complete your thought because you correctly showed that process zero couldn't run initially. So you kind of skipped over that, but then you never mentioned or discussed or showed, well, process zero actually can run now um, after these processes ran because I got these available resources and, 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 and we can meet the needs of process zero, right? So so I, I didn't take any points off for that, but, but you really need to show kind of the complete sequence. I didn't really show the complete sequence here because I kind of hand waved it saying at this point, um, all processes are now eligible. So once you get to that point, you know that um, you're gonna be able to show a safe sequence. If they're all eligible, you can select anyone and the, the resources aren't gonna go down. They're only gonna continue going up. So, um, all right. So is that clear enough on that? Um, so then, So then let me just step through. Uh, there, there was two ways that people approach the, the fourth part here. One was wrong and one was right. So normally when I give you questions like this, um, the and, and this is the way the textbook does it, the, the resources are in addition to what the process currently has. So P5 is requesting, um, what was it? Um, the additional... Uh, so this is an addition. So 3233 is an addition to what P5 currently has out there. So some, uh, I'll talk about this second here, um, you know, but but to be clear, when you get these questions on the test on Friday or Saturday, it's going to be in, in addition to what is currently allocated. Right? And, and I, I mentioned that on Tuesday. Some people still didn't do that correctly. You know? so, so really the final allocation that's being requested is for P5 to end up with 4244 four, four here. For this problem here, right? Some people took this to mean that the final total allocation is three, two, three, three. So I'll discuss that next year. Although I wish I had a whiteboard to do that, but um, um, if you do it the way that was described here, um, the way the textbook does it, so th those three, two, three, three is in addition to what it currently has. So that means that the new allocation for process five um, um, is uh, four, two, four, four, right? Um, and it would be good to, for these problems, if I'm asking you to show whether a new state is safe or not, to show what the, the full new state. Um, although, again, the claim shouldn't change. So that's a maximum claim that, that's fixed. But the allocation and the needs and the availables will change. Although, you know, the only thing that should change for the allocations and the needs are the process that's making the request, right? So, so anyway, for the, re the request of additional 3233, that means allocations go up to 4244. And then you would sub um, you subtract those from the needs uh, uh, for process five or just redo it. Um, so, you know, so, you know, again, all these should be the same as what we had before, but process five needs would now be 0200. Zero, 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 right? Or you could just subtract Three two three three from its previous needs. If you got that right for step two, to get zero two zero zero again, um, and then the available also should be modified. This so we're uh, you know again a quick way is just to subtract that, assuming you had available um, correct in, in the state beforehand, right? Would you were given that? So if you subtract the three two three three from um, the available we had to start with. Um, Um, so 3233 three, three from that 6354 three, gives you the, what, 3121, uh, all right? Yeah, 3121. Um, so anyway, if, if you have that state correct, uh, this state actually isn't safe. Uh, so again, to prove whether it's safe or not, 
you have to try and find a, a, a sequence of processes being candidates and running to completion. In this case, immediately, no process is a candidate, so there's no safe sequence of processes running to completion here. Um, uh, at a minimum for the test, you should demonstrate that. I mean, it's, it's probably not enough to say, obviously, no process is a candidate. Um, although that's kind of what I did on the example solution here. So, but, you know, basically, you know, we've got these available. These are the needs. So um, process zero is not a candidate because it needs seven of A and there's only three. Process one isn't a candidate um, because it needs two of D and there's only one of D. Uh, process two uh, needs four of B and there's only one. Process three needs uh, three of B, don't have enough Bs. Process four needs four of A's, not enough A's. And process five, which would be the, the most likely here, but it's not quite because we need it needs two of Bs. And there's only one remaining if we granted that um, request. So in fact, this state, if you interpreted it, that those resources were in, in addition to what it had, uh, would not be safe. But um, um, I might need something to, to draw on here. I don't know if I'll be able to remember this. I, I think I, I kind of wrote this up in the uh, um, in the um, uh, announcement about problem set three here. So um, anyway, it, it does turn out. So a lot of people that, that interpreted that to mean that the final allocation should be three, two, three, three still got it wrong because actually the state is safe. So, so if, if this becomes 3233 three, three for the allocations, that means that your need goes down to, you know, 4444 four, four minus 3233 three is um, um, uh, what, uh, 1211. One, one. So, so we end up with a need of 1211. One, one. So yeah, the only difference between uh, what I showed here uh, is that uh, instead of four two four four, you people are interpreting this as as a final allocation of three two three three, right? So just a, a difference of one for A, C, and D. So the need would be one two one one, but the available um, there's an extra one available for uh, um, A, C, and D uh, in that interpretation of this question. So it's what it's four um, uh, four one three two. I believe, right? In that case, um, um, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to remember this. I'm gonna have to either write it down or yes, yeah, four and three, two. Um, so P1, P4, and P5 should be candidates, unless I made a mistake on that. Um, so, so P1, uh, 4132 is definitely a candidate. Um, um, so, so that available, 4132 is less than that. Uh, um, P4 and P5. So 4132, also P4. Um, P5, P, P5's needs are, um, did I get the needs wrong? Maybe, maybe, maybe I had something wrong there. I'd go back and remember. Did I do that right? Um, uh, anyway, so but I'm pretty certain um, um, I can't remember. If maybe maybe I made a mistake on P5, but but definitely uh, what uh, P1 and P4 are candidates, um, and I believe that if you uh, run both of those, then um, and return back their allocations. Um, you're in a state then that you'll be able to run the rest of them. So um, I'll have to double check that. But yeah, I believe that state actually is safe. Um, that you didn't All right. Um, anyway, so questions on that. So, I mean, the kind of the point of that, though, is, you know, make certain that you're solid on, on this um, for Friday. You probably want to be solid on the um, uh, deadlock detection as well. Um, I, I probably talked about that in the lecture video. So they're a little bit different. Right? So, so this is uh, avoiding deadlocks from ever occurring by upfront making a decision whether to allow new resources to be locked or not. Where deadlock detection, the, the algorithm ends up being kind of similar. Uh, there, there's a slight difference. Um, 
But uh, in, in the case for deadlock detection, uh, you have a, a state that's not exactly the same because for deadlock detection, you don't have to have a claim up front uh, about what the maximum is. You just allow the processes to uh, allocate their resources, um, and then deadlock detection basically is asking the question, is there a, currently a deadlock or not um, in the system? But, but you do a similar mechanism that you um, find processes um, that are kind of candidates according to um, criteria and simulate them kind of uh, releasing their resources back. So. Um, All right, anybody? So, any questions about the problem set? Um, if not, anyway, so um, we can talk some more about uh, the program assignment. I, um, kind of as I was mentioning, um, last Tuesday, it's probably, hopefully most people won't find this assignment um, quite as difficult as number two, so it should be a little bit easier. Um, all right, let me go ahead and get things started on that, but we can talk about it some more. We did kind of get through most everything on Tuesday, so this might be a relatively quick session unless I get some questions from people wanting to help on things, so. Let me go ahead and bring it up, um, see if there's more we can, I'll probably remind, I mean, there are some people that still haven't, that, that never really got the first two assignments correctly submitted. So maybe I'll, I'll start by showing the submission process again here, just reminding people about some of those things and running unit tests and how the simulations work, so yeah. I don't have I don't have the procedures written down on that, but uh, but yeah, you would be able to do that. Um, but the the biggest thing would be the yeah the, the version of the C plus plus compiler and stuff. But but yeah, if you're in a Linux environment. It would probably be relatively um, painless. Uh, probably work pretty easily. Possible on Windows environments without missing too much going back into the main file. I probably on, on a Windows environment. You, you want to look into using the Linux Windows. What's it called? The the Linux as a subsystem on Windows or installing. Uh, one of the things that gives you the, the Linux tools that so can actually be using G++, GCC sort of stuff. So, because um, yeah, I don't know if you install Visual Studio Code, um, uh, of course it'll, it'll work fine as a, as a Windows um, um, application executable, uh, but I don't know by default um, what compiler it kind of uses on the Windows environment or where it gets the C++ compiler stuff set up, so. So yeah, as long as you had like a uh, some version of the, the GNU compiler installed instead of uh, Microsoft, the MSVC or something else, right. you'd probably be good. So, okay. um, all right. So I'll try and keep the keep aware of anybody has questions online, although you know, if I don't see you type out anything, um, you know, feel free to unmute and um, ask questions. So um, so yeah, maybe you know, let me just remind people one or two things about these assignments. So the ultimate goal of these is like a simulation of some aspect of an operating system, or in this case, it's a simulation of um, you know the, the the banker's algorithm being run on system state. Um, so when you do um, um, you know so there are keyboard shortcuts um, to to build the system. Um, 
control shift one, control shift two, and control shift three to, to do a clean and build. Uh, as I've shown before, I mean, you can do all the, you should be able to do all this from the command line if you have problems with the um, keyboard shortcut. So if you open up a terminal, um, you'll get a regular Linux command line. Um, and you can do your make clean, make, and make tests. Um, So I'll just go through this quickly because like I said, we, we have talked about this before. So, you know, one thing that you gotta understand about the, the make is that it's actually building two executables uh, for these assignments. So one are these unit tests, uh, which is output as a test executable. Um, and that's the main way that people should be working on these assignments is by, you know, looking at the test case and, and the tasks, um, and then one by one getting uh, each of the assertions or checks to be working, um, and then moving on to the next task and so on. So, uh, you know, the, the, the make tests is actually, I mean, all it's doing is running the test executable. So like if you scroll back up and look at the make test, it just does dot slash test, which is how you run an executable in the current directory where you're at. So with, with some flags here. So you can run those tests by hand as well if you want to. Um, um, although the, the test will also run the system tests. So if you wanna run the system test by hand, you can also run those by hand. Uh, the make test will first try to run the test. And if all the tests, the unit tests are passing, It'll run the system tests for you. So. Um, but the, um, so really the whole purpose of these um, is though, is this executable called sim here, right? So I think all the assignments just create an executable and call it sim. Um, so in this case, it's a, it's a simulation of the banker's algorithm here. So, um, what we're really building is a tool from the command line uh, that's, that's meant to be run from the command line uh, that invokes, you know, the procedures in these uh, those files that you complete for the assignments. Um, so in this case, you know, um, our simulation takes um, a single uh, parameter, just takes the input file, uh, which is the, the starting state that you're supposed to run the banker's algorithm on and give a determination of it's safe or not, right? So in, in our case, um, all of these files that were used for testing of different purposes are in a subdirectory called sim files. Um, and, and for this assignment three, it's the state-something.sim are meant to be the input file. So I, I showed those before uh, on Tuesday. Um, so we do a lot of the testing with this uh, state1.sim, which is the same state as the example from our textbook. Um, you know, so we're, where we've got four processes and three um, resources here, and these are the total resources, and this is the, initial, the maximum claims and the current allocations um, for this uh, state that we want to determine if it's safe or not. Um, um, and, uh, you know, if you miss that, I'll just scroll back up. So, so you can always run these simulations by hand once you get them working and get all the unit tests passing and maybe doing some additional steps to get the system test output to work too. So, um, so in this case, basically all it does is output the um, initial state of the system. Uh, and then um, um, this is relatively simple compared to the previous simulation. So it just outputs the determination whether the state was safe or not safe. Um, and then, yeah, I just wanted to remind one more thing then. So to, to submit the assignments, uh, you do have to do this final step from the command line. Uh, you have to do the make submit command, right? So. Uh, if you want to see all the things you can do with the build system, you can do make help. That should print out everything. But make submit um, creates this uh, 
um, um, a, a tar.gzip file um, in your current directory. And that's what you need to submit for the assignment, right? So I still had people in the first two assignments so far that aren't submitting um, the correct um, um, submission file here, right? This gets thrown into the um, an auto grader kind of thing that, uh, you know, basically does the same unit tests and system tests um, and does some other checks of things um, um, and generates kind of a report uh, that I use as the basis to start the evaluations for the assignment. So, so you do need to be able to upload that, right? So, so you do need to have your um, files being correctly shared from your dev box um, uh, with your host system so that you can find that file. So uh, on your host system, if, if you open up a file browser, um, so for me, you know, I, I clone my repository into a box of subdirectory called uh, 430 and under there is where you'll find, under your assignments, you'll find all the assignments, and, then, and under there is where you should find the files that you're working on, including that file you need to upload um, for the assignment. All right. Um, so I just wanted to remind people of that. Anybody kind of want to ask questions about procedurally about stuff? Um, if I remember right, I may have given a, a lot of the first task even on this assignment. Let's see where we left off last time. So, uh, but we can talk in more detail about the, the other tasks. So we spent most of this ask, the, the time last time talking about the first task for this assignment. Um, so you'll be doing all your work in the state.cpp for this assignment here. So the first task is to implement the um, needs are met. So um, I guess I didn't uh, didn't give you any um, code on that. So uh, I must have just talked about it. So. Um, So yeah, for this first task, um, the, uh, the, the actually the first test case uh, for this assignment is testing the uh, load state. So you don't really do anything. It's not really till the second test case where we test uh, the needs are met. So, um, but uh, does anybody have any questions about the needs are met? It um, basically it takes two parameters. Um, it takes one of those. Uh, basically, it takes a you know a, a regular. We're, we're using uh, regular arrays and regular one-dimensional and two-dimensional arrays to represent the vectors and matrices. Um, so I did show those last time, but um, if people want me to, I can kind of talk about that again. The, the way we're representing stuff. So, but in this case, we're representing um, the available um, resources, the available vector as just a one-dimensional array. So if we've got three resources, we'd have a one-dimensional array uh, with three values. We are using zero-based indexing um, for our um, um, arrays, one-dimensional and two-dimensional. So we consider this resource zero has you know, zero available, resource one has one available, and resource two has one available. Um, so the purpose of the needs are met function is, okay, uh, given the current state of the system, the current state of the system, the rest of the state um, is, you know, um, you know, this, this is a, um, uh, this is a, a class uh, that you're implementing uh, member methods of. So the, the state, if it's already been loaded, um, which it has for these tests. So we've already loaded in some particular state from a file. So all the other state besides the available resources are in there as member variables. So you've got the, the claim matrix if you need to access that, the allocation matrix, uh, the need matrix, um, um, total resources. Uh, you're, you're normally not gonna be using resources available. Those are the initial resources available when we start uh, trying to determine if the state is safe or not. Um, but for all these procedures, um, 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 we um, use a separate 
um, one dimensional array to keep track of the current available resources. That needs to be initialized to the initial available resources when we do the final method for this assignment. Uh, but then when we release resources back, these will be incremented anytime we run a process and, and it runs to completion and we give back its resources. We have to um, add those back into the current available. So that's kind of why we're uh, passing that in as a separate array instead of using the um, resources available um, in the class itself. So, so this will be what they initially were, um, but uh, these arrays here will be what they currently are um, as we are determining whether a state was safe or not. Um, So, you know, given given that kind of as I showed before, uh, for the state one, I can um, open up the state one again. I guess I closed it back off, but um, um, uh, oh yeah, I mean, you know, but we don't have the the needs in here because those are inferred. Um, but uh, but you will have those, uh, you know, as part of loading the state, all these get filled out, you know, the, the, the claim and the action, but also the needs, right? So for state one, which is the same as in our textbook, you know, the, the needs um, is the difference between the maximum claim and the allocation. So the current needs are going to be what? Uh, two, two, two for process zero, the, the rows of the processes, again, um, um, so we get uh, what zero zero one for process one, um, uh, one zero three, and then uh, and let me know if, if you see me make a mistake on these. So uh, and what four two zero? Right, well, I think that's right. Uh, but the um, the point is, you know, kind of looking back at this for the. Um, the needs here, split that. Um, comparing that with our tests here. So, you know, if the current available is 0, 1, 1, um, um, I mean, right away you can see that none of the process 0, 2, or 3 can work because they all need a resource 0. Uh, we don't have any of those, right? The only one that ends up being a candidate, initially given you know the state one, given these needs, is the um, uh, process one here. So we got zero one one, um, um, and it only needs one of the resource uh, two. So, so that's the only one that should return true. So, so the needs are met is returning a Boolean result. Um, returns a Boolean result given the current state of 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 uh, of our system and uh, the, the current available that it's that you're told it only returns that information for the particular process you ask it to determine it for so so right but anybody, anybody have a so so this you know all these hopefully you know aren't too tough uh, fact, you know this one you just need they need to iterate over all the all the resources for the process so you're going to iterate over uh, resource zero one and two for the particular process you're asked for uh, in the need matrix, comparing that to the current available. And if you find um, a need that's bigger than a current available, um, you would return false. But if, if all of them are less than or equal, after you check them all, you'd want to return true um, from that method. So, um, All right. So that was the first one. Again, stop me if anybody wants to get a clarification on, on any of these. So, um, the second task is then to implement the fine candidate process. So really, uh, in your final is safe method, um, which is going to determine whether a state is safe or not, you're not going to be directly using the needs are met. 
but you need to reuse the needs are met in the, the fine candidate process. Okay, so the basic idea is the fine candidate process should iterate over all the processes that aren't completed. Uh, or well, so, so the, the, the most straightforward algorithm is to iterate over all the processes. And if it's not completed um, and if its needs can be met, you return it. So, so, so you know, the first such process that you find, you know, you should start iterating from process zero up to the maximum number of processes that you have. Um, and the first such candidate you find, you would return its process number or its index, right? Um, um, or um, the other thing that can happen though, is that there's no candidate uh, whose needs can be met, in which case you should return this no candidate um, variable. Uh, it's a, it's a, a global constant that's defined in the state.hpp. Um, since the, the valid indexes are you know zero or positive integers, so we just use negative values as flags um, for some of these functions to indicate um, an unsuccessful result here. So. Um, all right. So the um, fine candidate process, um, uh, in this case, we're taking what, two, uh, two arrays instead of one. So you get one array of Booleans, which is a list of which processes are completed or not completed. Um, and then the second array is the same as what we had before, that current available array. Um, so uh, actually you're, you're, um, you're not going to be directly using, you, you need current available because you need to pass that into the, the needs are met, but, but you don't really need to directly look at current available. So, so you know, again, um, hopefully if you're following me on this, you know, this is relatively straightforward. Uh, you need to iterate over all the processes that you have uh, in the, the current state um, that you're trying to make this determination for. Um, and basically inside the loop is if the process is not completed um, and if you call the needs are met and it and is true that the, the needs are met, then you can return that as the candidate process. You find that, that uh, ID number uh, that you find for the problem. Or, you know, if you search all the processes and for one reason or the other, their needs can't be met or they're already completed and, and no process ends up being a candidate, you should return the, the no candidate um, at the end here. So. Um, yeah, and if you understand all that, you know, that should make sense, these tests here. So again, you know, we're loading the same state here. Uh, so if initially, you know, again, looking back to the previous one, the only process whose needs could be met initially was process one. The other one's needs couldn't be met in the state here, given a current available vector of zero one one. So, uh, you know, if that is, that's our, our same initial current available vector and all the processes haven't been completed yet, the first, if you call find candidate process, it should return process one, because that's the only process that's a candidate. Um, but, you know, so we're testing here, we'll give an example. So if we set process one to be completed, uh, and you ask the same question. Um, so since process one is shouldn't be a, a candidate, you have to check process zero, two, and three. Uh, but in that case, no process is a candidate, so it should return no candidate. Um, and so on. So, but but yeah. So here we're kind of simulating. So if you end up returning the resources for process one, you end up with available of six two three. So at that point, uh, even if process one is completed, um, um, but other processes, actually all three processes, I believe, are um, candidates at that point. So uh, this is just showing that it should return the, the, the first process it finds um, um, between zero, two, and three. Um, so, so zero is a candidate. All right. Um, okay, is that clear enough? Anybody want to ask a question about the second task?
So we're basically going to be using the, the, the fine candidate processes in the loop um, for the is, to implement our is safe method. So the other thing that you need for the is safe method um, is you need to, if you find a candidate process, to release its resources back to the available. And so that's what the um, release allocated resources function for task three is supposed to do. Um, um, so here, we're passing in the current available um, and um, so, for example, if we tell it if current available is 011, one, one, um, and uh, we tell it to release the allocated resources for uh, uh, process one back to the current available. So, so you know, go, again, if we go back and look at, at the um, um, state here, process one has, has allocated six, one, and two. So we should expect after calling release allocated resources uh, that the current available, you know, after we return from this function is, you know, 612 added to the 011, so the 623, right? So that, that's all that this is doing uh, here. So, so for this one, basically uh, you need to add together for the particular process that's um, indicated, add the allocations back to this array that you're given as the second parameter um, for the release allocated resources. All right. But yeah, again, this is this is simulating um, that part of the algorithm, so releasing back the resources um, as we try and find a safe sequence of um, processes to run here. So. Um, all right, and then, yeah, and then, you know, um, I can talk a little bit more of the, we didn't, uh, the one that we didn't talk about Tuesday that much, so much was the is safe um, method here. So, um, So um, there's a suggested kind of algorithm. I mean, um, you could certainly do it a little bit differently if you wanted to, but um, um, we did, you do need to reuse the um, fine candidate process and the release allocated resources. Um, and since, you know, so since for example, the fine candidate process, you have to pass in an array of Booleans, you do have to use an array of Booleans to keep track of the, which processes are completed and which haven't been completed yet. Um, so, um, so, so that can constrain you a little bit since you do have to reuse these functions. Um, but having those functions should make this code relatively straightforward, I think. So, so there are two steps you have to do initialization, but these are pretty similar to the tests. So you have to make a copy of the resource available vector. Okay, so uh, in all these tests, uh, we define um, a current available and we initialized it kind of by hand. So, but so instead of initializing it by hand, you have to initialize the current available to be uh, whatever is in the um, the member. Uh, where is it? That that uh, resource available uh, member. Um, value in the state class again okay? so so you know that can be a simple loop basically so so copying the the, the values from resource available um, into uh, an array that you declare locally right? um, so um oh uh, kind of as a hint here so here you know in the test code we kind of leave the size of the array empty uh, because what C and does and C++ does for arrays, if you give it an initialization list like this, it will correctly determine that it needs an array of size three, right? But for you, for the safe method, um, you're all gonna have to specify because you can't really initialize it with a hard-coded list 
Um, so you would have to specify, specify a size, right? But um, um, I mentioned this last time, and if you go back and look um, in the declaration of the state header file, we're, we're basically using statically allocated one and two dimensional arrays. So, so we'll never have simulations with more than 20 processes or 20 resources in, in the, the uh, state. So you can go ahead and use that uh, to statically allocate if you want. You could, you could dynamically allocate it as well. So that's fine because you know uh, in your implementation of the safe method, um, you can access you know, the, the number of uh, resources Right, so the uh, available, you just need an array big enough to hold uh, whatever the number of resources are in the current state. So you could do it either way. Um, um, uh, you could allocate the array dynamically um, or statically, like match resources, right? So, um, but yeah, given that you can um, then just copy uh, the values um, uh, from the initial resources available to the current available. Um, actually, there is like a member method uh, that's given to you that you could actually reuse if I remember right. Um, um, oh, I guess it's not a member method, but yeah, there's there's a some uh, functions uh, in particular, you might want to look at the copy vector um, in the state ICPV, but it's basically doing the same thing you need to do uh, to copy the resources from the one array to the other array, or you could just reuse the copy vector uh, to do that. So, um, um, and same, you do need to also create um, a list of the completed. It should be an array of booleans. Um, and, uh, you, uh, you, and it does need to be initialized, though, so you, so you probably need another list in here or another loop in here to uh, just to make certain everything is initialized to false or else you'll have problems if you don't correctly initialize these two. After you do that, though, then, then your loop um, um, is just described here, uh, although um, kind of a hint here, a common error that I see a lot of people do on this is to implement this as a for, try to implement this as a for loop. Um, but um, really, the most natural thing, you know, remember, you should you should keep doing this loop as long as there are candidate processes. So as long as find candidate process returns uh, something other than no candidate, uh, you want to keep doing the loop, right? Um, so so you can get it correct if you do a for loop, but but you know, um, the the other thing is that you know. Even if initially process zero is not a candidate, you have to skip over, but later on process zero might be a candidate. So it's bad to have a for loop here where you're trying to loop over process numbers because you know if you skip over process zero and then you end up like releasing process one, uh, if you never do anything to go back and then check if zero is a candidate now, um, you'll have a bug there, right? So to me, the most natural thing is kind of like a while loop. So it's a while, um, um, you're still getting candidates back from find candidate process, um, or while find candidate process is not returning no candidate, you'll need to do these steps, right? So, um, 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 so you'll have to call find candidate process somehow. It will return you um, uh, 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 it's the process ID, um, and then you re call release allocated resources for that process. Um, and, and keep doing that until you know no candidate uh, remains, right? Um, and then you're not quite done. So after that, the real answer is, okay, um, was a safe sequence found or not? So you can determine if there's a safe sequence by using the completed vector, right? So if all the processes, so initially um, that your completed array um, has to, start out as everything is false. But if you get through the loop here and if everything has been marked as being completed, if, if they're all true, then the answer is um, true. You know, the, the state was safe. We, we were able to actually run all the processes to completion. 
Otherwise, you know, if you find one or more processes, they're still false as being completed, uh, you should return false um, as the answer um, from here. Um, all right. Anybody want to ask a question about the assignment three? Like I said, I, I think most people, I'm going to have to go back and maybe try and um, adjust my assignment too a little bit. Uh, I hope most people will find this assignment. It's a little bit more straightforward. Uh, and also, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything you have to do to get the system test to pass. Um, 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 it, uh, uh, the, the output is really just safe or not safe uh, for the most part. That's being expected from the system tests here. So... Um, so if you get the if you get all these tasks completed, you should get um, the unit test to be passing, and the system test will probably be passing for you as well. Although it is possible to make a, a subtle error that where you get the is safe to work, but uh, it doesn't pass the system test for some reason. I've, I've seen that happen. So. Um, All right, so that, that, uh, I think that was all I wanted to kind of cover. Um, um, so anybody want to ask kind of the last thing? I mean, if not, I'll let you guys go. We still have, what, the rest of today to get the assignment three completed. So you can keep sending me emails. I mean, I usually stop around, you know, uh, seven or eight in the afternoon or so. So you should try to... If you have any questions uh, on the assignment, try to get them to me before then. So. All right. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and end the session there. Unless somebody wants to give a last minute question here. Um, as usual, I'll go ahead and post this after I get it um, saved in case people want to look at it after the fact. Uh, but yeah, see you guys later then.